Welcome to TMS Insights. It's November, getting towards the end of the year, but it's still very busy. Ben Clark and Jeremy Hook bringing you an update. Obviously, we've come into November where things have consolidated, but October was a tough month for the market, 6% down in October, which followed a week into September. And Ben, um, looking back on the period, it's stabilised somewhat now. Some some bigger force to play after a decent run in the market, a substantial pullback. Yeah, and really driven by global sort of macro factors rather than yeah. specific factors related to our market, although I think the change in government leadership's probably been a bit of a factor for the Australian market. But really, Jeremy, this has come down to two things. Um, the spike higher we saw in bond yields around the world, which um, probably saw some money shifting amongst the big pension mm. funds and inter- um, sovereign wealth <laughs> funds out of shares and into bonds as they the returns get a bit more attractive. And secondly, the continual sort of toing and froing between Trump and China. I think if you if you boil it down, um, that the, these are two factors. I think that markets globally have been sort of f- probably a bit too comfortable with and have been sort of ignoring, and then very suddenly priced in those risk kind of factors. And that pricing saw you know largely growth stocks hit more than mm. the, the value end of the market, but again equally and getting back to where we're at right now, they seem to have recovered a bit and yeah. stabilised. So even though some of those risks haven't been totally dealt with, the market's pretty comfortable in the repricing. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there hasn't actually been a lot of poor company news, you'd say, mm. out and about it. There, there's been things here and there. It's been fairly specific and company specific, but it's more been, I think, a movement of money that's occurred around the world out of one asset class and into another. And that movement feels like it might have sort of largely played out. Things are calming down and we'll probably start to see the fundamentals sort of um, kick back in over the next couple of months leading into Christmas. And you mentioned the stock specifics. At this time of year, typically post-bank reporting, we'll get onto that in a sec, is AGM season. So you get the companies giving you a little bit of an update. Some of that news has been pretty good. Yeah, I'd I'd say broadly, I mean, particularly amongst the stocks we hold, I've Really, it's been either an affirmation of existing earnings um, goals Mm. or in some cases there's been some upgrades coming through despite some quite weaker share prices. So it's always hard sort of, um, you know, trying to understand, I guess, how that can happen. But generally it's just the PE has been re-rated a bit lower. Yeah, and some of them got a bit higher, which was part of the story. So be careful there. But again, we think this has created good value. Let's get into some of the stocks. Uh, From recent updates and everything, Ben, Something like Challenger has been a stock we've talked about. hasn't done so well, but there's reasons why it's changed. Yep. Change of management, Brian yep. Benari moving on, highly regarded. And again, the annuity settings that we thought had great optimism maybe will be a bit deferred and maybe not as big as we thought they might have been. Yeah, so um, yeah, two things going on with Challenger. So Brian Benari, the long-serving CEO, I think incredibly well regarded, has announced his retirement. Um, he's you know well into his 60s, I would say now. And we've met... The, the um, uh, Richard is coming up under the ranks at a, an investor day recently. Seems like a very capable sort of um, replacement, good succession planning. But there's always some disappointment, I think, when a, a very well-regarded CEO moves on. Um, and secondly, the government was bringing in these mandatory um, sort of uh, changes where large super funds had to sign declarations saying they considered and where appropriate recommended annuities. They're called the SIPA reforms, SIPA reforms. Um, and the government announced a couple of weeks ago that they're going to push those back a couple of years after a consultation with industry. So I think with Challenger, we saw continual growth in earnings, 8 to 12%. And actually, at the AGM, they reaffirmed Good guidance, guidance, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. So the short term looks all right. It's just but that growth's not going to accelerate yeah, as rapidly, but still plenty of reasons. Good stock to be there. and cheaper now. So yep. Yep. looks definitely. okay. Another good update just last week was REA Group. Yep. Now, there's been a thesis going around knowing the residential property market slowed yep. and in some places quite sharply that it might affect the portals that sell that advertising space. Yep. But REA confirmed that, in fact, they're doing really well. Yeah, I mean, 23% EBIT growth in the first quarter is just an extraordinary yeah. number. And then we, you know, we're listening to the CEO present and the analysts were clearly quite taken aback at how strong a start to the year they had. Um, one interesting tidbit of information I give from the core was um, Tracy Fellows, the CEO, actually believes that there could be a large amount of transactions occurring leading into this election. So mm-hmm. she sort of said, 
If you're an investor that's looking to buy a property, you'd be mad not to buy it before the election yeah. and lock in negative gearing yeah. benefits for its life. Yeah. Um, and that might also be a good time for people who've been looking to sell to sell. So we might see quite a strong year from REA. Some, some turnover related activity, yep. even if the subsequent immediate investment performance isn't that good because Absolutely. of those changes. Yep. But um, that's good. We had uh, buyback news. So Rio Tinto today actually released the, the pricing of their buyback. Really, yeah, big numbers. So, because it, it traded well during the pricing period, yep. So, those in pension phase that were able to take advantage of that, be getting a massive dividend in the form of uh, sixty dollars twenty-five fully framed dividend. Yep, so I think out. it's a, been yeah. a good short-term profit. Um, BHP is obviously the next in line that's doing something very similar, and you know, I think at a board level, there's a lot of companies who are looking at their franking credit balances, <laughs> thinking. Let's try and get these some of these back to our shareholders while they can potentially still use them. Now, one company that made an announcement today that we like is Woolworths, and they announced that they will be selling their their garages, their, their service stations, which has been mooted for some time. They found a buyer. Now, uh, this will leave them debt free, Ben, and exactly one of those companies that could be able to launch an off market buyback special dividend. We know they've got a lot of franking credits. Yep, they're in a good position. Yep. Worth at the moment, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think extremely likely there could be an off market buyback um, coming in the next sort of few months. I think, even fundamentally, this business is in superb shape. Mm. It's really gone back to what it was good at. I think, you know, a couple of years ago, we had all this everyone thinking Audi was suddenly going to take over yeah. the world and in, in groceries, of course. Actually, and Audi stopped now, really. They're great. Audi's stopped. actually been losing market yeah. share on the east coast of the country for the last 18 months. And um, and Amazon was a massive um, fizzle you know, when yeah. they finally did launch. Um, you know, the, I think for both Coles and Woolworths, what we're hearing is that this huge pressure on um, prices is starting to turn a bit more normal. Yeah. And, and that should see some um, food inflation, yeah. which will be very good for both of these businesses, but particularly Woolies, I suspect. And the meeting to do the demerger for West Farmers to split off coals is the week after next. So there will be independently listed coals at the end of the month, Yep, which is interesting. Now let's get on to those banks, Ben. They reported. Yep. Most of them have gone ex-dividend. I think Westpac uh, still to go ex-dividend. That's it. But uh, that's tomorrow. So those dividends have come out of the market, so it helps that overall market return good dividends, good results. Um, earnings were lower as expected and interest margins were lower. The one I liked best was probably Westpac out of the group. Yep. What about yourself? Yeah, look, I, I thought all three did amazingly well, you know, to only give up 2 to 3% earnings per share growth um, or to go back EPS, cash EPS, given all the stuff that's been going on in the last year. It's quite extraordinary. And you know, there's some question marks about the sustainability of the dividends, NABs mm. in particular. Mm. Um, they've they've held those and they look, I think, quite sustainable now. And we're actually seeing a, a re-rating the banks. I mean, CBA has risen from 66 to nearly $72 in the last Without couple of Without reporting in this season yep. and not paying a dividend. They'll, That's of course, right. report in February. And we should also mention Macquarie. Yeah. The three you were talking about were ANZ, Westpac and NAB, but Macquarie. Yep. Standing out in both returns, obviously not likely to be Royal Commission affected in the way no. the retail banks are. And and actually had an upgrade yeah. versus the other banks reporting declining earnings per share. These guys have again upgraded their numbers. I, Macquarie for me, I mean, you sh we really shouldn't lump it in with the other banks. It's Separate, such a different yeah. business these days. But it's the one I think to own. You know, yeah. the, it's it's in an earnings upgrade cycle. The dividend yield is actually still pretty handy. Yeah. The fact that it's only 40% franked is probably going to become a bit less of a worry for a mm. lot of clients. Mm. And, um, you know, it doesn't look overly expensive. Okay, now looking forward as we come into the back end of the year, we've still got AGM stock specific news. We've had some macro news. Midterm elections out of the US were dealt with, processed by the market, ultimately happy with the results. Mm. The China trade discussions go on, our own political situation continues to demonstrate the likelihood of a change of government next year, concern about franking credits, property markets. But at 59 and a bit, 5,900 on the index, the market looks pretty well valued. Yeah. And there's some opportunity to buy there. I think so. Like, I, you know, I think now we've gone from the market sort of ignoring a number of these issues to now completely freaking out about them last <laughs> month. And, um, and it, it feels like that repricing of risk has now largely played out. So we'd have to see something 
out of left field from here, probably for another bout of selling, I suspect. And, you know, who knows what that could be. It could be inflation or it could be another China-Trump sort of um, arm wrestle. The G20 is coming up where they're hoping to do a deal. Um, but, look, I, I think absent in all that, the thing we have seen is companies coming out and broadly delivering quite reasonable updates yep. at a time when share prices have got cheaper. So you have to say the outlook for the market's improved. That's good news. And that's all we've got time for today. We'll be back with another update in December.